Uh, all right, we're going to bring up our first panel for this morning. Uh, it is on the Connected Appliance Revolution, and that's going to be moderated by Mr. Rich Brown. He's the executive editor of CNET. Uh, please welcome our next panel to the stage. All right, good morning. So we've got about 30 minutes to get through all of the smart kitchen, so no problem. Uh, Mike, thank you for putting this event together. Uh, I look forward to many more of these, by the way. This is uh, pretty great. There's a lot of really interesting people coming to the stage today. So I'd like to introduce the people on my panel. Why don't you guys uh, do a little quick, who, who are you and what do you do? Um, good morning. My name is Alejandro Peña, and I'm the president for Jardin Consumer Solutions. Hi, my name is Nate Cho. I'm with Electrolux, uh, our North American group in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I run their connectivity strategy. I'm Steve Joseph with Decor, president. And uh, I'm Rich Brown, and I run CNET's uh, Smart Home and Appliance Reviews Beat out of Louisville, Kentucky. Okay, so to kick this off, uh, I'm just going to throw a question directly to you guys here. So you all have products either in the market and have had for a while in the case of Decor and uh, Jarden. And then Electrolux, you guys have a in-wall oven with a camera about to come out in Europe, right, sometime in the next several months here. So what I'm wondering is, what is the most surprising piece of consumer feedback or uh, customer research feedback that you've seen from these products? OK, I'll start. Um... You know, we've been in this space now for about two years, and I think the most surprising answer we get all the time or piece of feedback is they want our products to be smarter. And I don't believe that at the time we came into this space, we gave the consumer enough credit and in a way somewhat limited, you know, how smart our products were going to be. Um, and we see it again and again in the reviews. We see it again and again in the feedback that we get from the consumers. You know, they want products to be more holistically about the experience. They want products to be smarter about helping them have a better experience in the kitchen uh, and not just limited to some functional uh, benefits that, you know, we thought would be appropriate for this stage in the development of the IoT in the kitchen. Uh, so in, in many ways, I think the biggest learning for, for us has been um, we need to aim higher. We have to think about the experience holistically and not just from a functional standpoint. I definitely agree with everything you said. And I guess from the other side, from a manufacturer side, what I've really enjoyed is all the data we've been able to collect. Now we have a better understanding of how consumers actually are using the products so we can make the next generation even better. So at Decor, we've, we've always been about innovations that truly matter to the cooking experience. So two and a half years ago, we didn't bring the first oven that was connected with an Android tablet to market just for the sake of a gadget or a, a new feature. Uh, we were really trying to bring real benefits to the consumer to enhance their cooking experience. And after being in market now for a couple of years with this, we have found s some really specific surprising uh, benefits that the consumer. consumers and uh, uh, homeowners have really liked kitchen designers too. Uh, so one of them that comes to mind is, especially for accessibility, uh, having a tablet and having the remote control uh, for the oven in the range uh, can really benefit someone who has any kind of physical handicaps uh, and make it a lot easier to interact with the product. Uh, we've, we've been surprised by the, kind of the overwhelming response we've received to that feature. Um, and then uh, also just, People really love being able to enjoy the party and not be uh, uh, worried about what's going on in the oven, right? Because they buy our products so they can entertain. Uh, and now they can do that without uh, checking the oven every five minutes because it's going to tell them exactly when it's done. It's going to send them a text message when it's done cooking. And the food with the meat probe is going to have the temperature perfectly done inside the, the meat. So all these benefits have been given. Great feedback from the consumer on those couple of things. Yeah, the, I wanted to just add something to the, uh, the whole concept of data. And, you know, we, we've been in business for many, many years. And, um, you know, the idea of thinking about 
data as a new skill and capability is not something that you know, we have done historically or done uh, very well. You know, we have over 10 million lines of data that in some cases you know, we sit around and, and we know it's very powerful, but at the same time, you know, I think at the beginning of this whole process, we were just not prepared or not prepared enough to deal with the amount of information that was going to come our way. You know, every time the consumer is interacting with a product, uh, you know, we get a signal. We know exactly how they're using it, when they're using it, um, at what times of the day they're using it, and all that information is being fed to us, but, you know, we were not ready. You know, we were not ready to deal with the amount of information and, and how to extract the insights from all of that information. Are you ready now? We are getting ready. Um, it is, by definition, a new skill and capability that you know, we, we grapple with the notion of do we build that in-house or do we go outside? Um, and every time we go outside, the experience has been that a lot of the people who have the capability from a scientific standpoint may not fully understand our business. And so we're always grappling with this notion of, you know, what capabilities do we really need to build in-house to really be a company that is uh, staffed adequately and that has the skills to be in this uh, smart kitchen world? Um, and what, what can we outsource? What, what can we go outside and, 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 you know, do for hire rather than having to have the skills in-house? Nate, is that something you guys are looking towards before you bring the product out to market, or is it kind of a wait and see? No, that's definitely something we're trying to understand what those costs would be, what the infrastructure needs to look like, as well as, I mean, being, let's call it old school manufacturers, we make products, we ship them, and we'll hear back when, if, if something goes wrong, but otherwise we typically don't have to continue to update and support it. So it's definitely a new challenge for us to have to continue to update the apps and also to learn the new skill set in terms of tech support and that it's not just our products anymore that is it they're interfacing with. That product has to go to the router and it goes out to the internet. It could break anywhere in that chain. So uh, getting our call center up to speed on that. I mean, that brings up uh, the support piece of this, I think, is there's a lot of potential for things to go wrong there, right? I mean, the uh, Jarden with, the, with the, the Mr. Coffee, the Wemo version of the Mr. Coffee that you guys put out, it's a pretty pretty kind of isolated app environment for that product, right? It doesn't talk, it kind of only does some, it, it does some basic features, right? Um, it doesn't interact with other devices, even though it's a Wemo product, it doesn't interact with other Wemo devices for Belkin. So in a way that makes it much easier to support, I would imagine. Whereas the Decor approach, you guys have a full on Android tablet built into your oven. Are you getting calls like, why can't I play Spotify on my oven? Like, wh where is the, uh, what is, what are the, I mean, I imagine there are plenty of advantages and disadvantages to both. I'd be, I would love to hear your, your take on the customer service piece for that. Yeah, yeah fortunately, we haven't had to deal with any app-related issues, uh, you know, people downloading an app, uh, even though our hardware could be more powerful and, and run better apps faster. And I, d I really don't think that's why people are buying the product. Uh, they're buying the product to help them cook better. Um, and uh, and make their kitchen look beautiful, of course, that, that's important. But, um, mm. but as far as the service aspect, uh, we have great diagnostic capabilities now uh, so that and the uh, ser independent service provider is critical in our business because we, we're major appliances, uh, so we have a large network of independent service providers around the country who, will, who the customer will call if anything should fail, uh, and they'll go to the home and service the product. Uh, now, with the technology, we're able to incorporate diagnostics, so when that servicer comes to the home, uh, he can go into the di diagnostic section of the app and figure out what's going on with the product. And of course, the next step would be for us to get an early detection of any kind of issue uh, that, that failed on the product and receive an uh, email to our customer service department where we could expedite the shipment of the part the replacement part, if, if one was needed, to that servicer so they could go out prepared for that service call and satisfy the customer on that first visit. Uh, so that's been a, a goal of ours for a long time is to first time call completion on a service call, mm -hmm. uh, get the servicer there with the right part, uh, and this is helping us get there, this technology. So, so I should point out in fairness that Jarden is not the only company on stage here that whose product is uh, kind of works is an island to itself, right? I mean, I think products, both your products, 
don't really interact with other smart kitchen devices or, or other devices around the house. How important, is, is it important to, to break out of that, to start talking to other things? Listen, I, I think the answer you know, for us at the beginning as we went into this was no, not yet. Um, you know, we have to find the user case. We have to find the experience that we're trying to enable um, in order to make that happen. I think with NFC and you know, new technologies like that, it's, it's become very viable to do um, things that you know, some years ago was gonna be you know, really difficult to achieve, but it's, it's possible today but does the consumer really want it? And what is the benefit? What is the job to be done by doing so? Um, if we don't have a real user case, if we don't have a real benefit for the consumer, then it's not really worth pursuing. Um, it, it's just gonna complicate things. It's just gonna be technology for the sake of technology. And we don't see you know, why that uh, should be part of the agenda just because it can't be done. Um, you know, we've seen applications where the use of NFC has enabled some of those things to happen. And one of the user case, uh, cases that we've uh, identified is the ability to prepare a, um, you know, a, a multi-part course uh, meal that can be all ready at the same time. And that is something that you know, is, is a benefit for the consumer um, and one that can be pursued through you know, technology of connecting several products. I think uh, by having an Android tablet, we're kind of fortunate because we already can connect to other devices. Uh, it, we have Bluetooth capabilities, so people are using their ovens and ranges to talk to their uh, speakers, their jam box in their kitchen, so they can play their music. They, they can play their music from their, their appliance. Whether or not that's a great user case, I think big question mark there. But, uh, but what we're working on too. We want to be able to talk to other products and uh, have other products, especially great apps like some of the ones featured here, like SideChef and uh, apps like that that really help you cook. Uh, you can run those apps on the oven. We want to give them the ability to actually control the oven, so to take the guesswork uh, and that extra step away from the consumer and have more of a fully automated uh, cooking experience. Uh, also, with companies like Plated that are now delivering the, uh, the ingredients to your home, taking that shopping portion or shopping chore out of the process uh, is a way, you know, more, more of the connectivity will help, uh, help make it an easier process for the consumer. I think that um, I, I agree with Alejandro's point that we're, maybe we're not quite there yet, but to a certain degree, I feel like there's a little bit of app overload. One of the questions with having the appliances talk to each other even is, or to other products in the smart home, Yes, we can build the, the framework or how they talk to each other, but what are they going to say to each other? That's kind of the, one of the other questions. And um, with, uh, for example, in the Decor's products, what I find interesting is with the voice, um, perhaps that's an opportunity or avenue to break down the silos so you don't have to go into five different apps to control the different appliances in your kitchen. But you may be talking to multiple different voice assistants in your house, right? Hey, hey Decor, hey Alexa, hey Siri. Um, that we, we have a big house project going in Louisville where we're, we're installing devices in this thing and, and seeing how they work and reviewing them there. And that's, it, that came up pretty much instantly. Like we've got too many voice controller uh, devices. It's, it's pretty confusing. Um, how important is it to own the platform? Um, what I think is maybe most unique to the smart kitchen space and smart home in general is uh, this is not just the tech industry sort of standards fight, right? I mean, there's, of course, Microsoft, Google, Apple, there's Electrolux, there's Decor, there's Jarden, there's Automotive, there's standard home goods like Chamberlain and Lockmakers, all these different, all these different incumbents and, and newcomers who want a piece of the, the platform pie, right? I mean, ha, ha, that, that's not good for the consumer. Eventually, that's good, that, I mean, I think we're already feeling that that is, uh, that is becoming confusing. How do, what happens next? How does that get easier? I, I think that's probably the most difficult question to answer for all of us um, in this room. And you know, part of me says that I want to protect my brand, I want to protect my consumer uh, experience with my brand, and I want to control every aspect of that, and I want to control every element of that, right? If Steve Jobs were here, that's exactly what he would say. 
But if you look at other industries, and if you look at airline industry, for example, Kayak has been very successful at creating a consumer experience that is agnostic to the airline, that is agnostic to the hotel chain, that is agnostic to all the elements that make a vacation the ultimate um, goal that the consumer is looking for. So if what the consumer is looking for really is a better experience in the kitchen, are we from a manufacturing standpoint or from a product standpoint um, in a position to offer the best experience or is somebody else out there, um, you know, maybe from a different perspective, able to offer a better experience? And I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be um, a choice for the consumer, right? I mean, who's going to be the kayak of the kitchen? I, I don't know. I mean, I think there's a lot of people out here who want to create that experience. Uh, but from our perspective, I want to create the Crock-Pot experience. You know, I have 1.6 million followers on Facebook who want to engage with my brand, and I think it's very important that I protect that engagement. But that doesn't rule out the fact that there's going to be a kayak of the smart kitchen. Uh, and I think both are going to be available, and the consumer is going to vote at the end of the day who uh, uh, and what experience they prefer. So to kind of follow up on that, uh, I think we definitely agree in that as well. We want to protect our brand experience, but when the kayaks do come around, one of the things we're struggling with or trying to deal or figure out how to tackle is when your experience has to be passed through to somebody else, to the kayak, how do you ensure that that's as true to your brand as, or our brand as possible? Can you ensure that? We're still working on that. <laughs> I, th I think that's exactly why we're here is to, to meet we want to play well with others, and we want to uh, uh, collaborate on innovations. Uh, and there are a lot of very innovative companies here that have great ideas that I think there can be win-win situations all, all around in terms of bringing a new technology, getting a new product to market quickly, learning from it, innovating again. Uh, so that, we're excited to be here for more of that. Uh, and I think, uh, um, as Steve said, we're kind of all in this together, and my concern is in this early stage is in the infancy of the smart kitchen, if some of the bigger products that go out there give consumers poor experiences, they'll be turned off to the whole smart kitchen um, as a whole, as a whole ecosystem. So Alejandro, you mentioned earlier, uh, con consumers felt that they wanted their products to be smarter, right? What do, you th what do you think their expectation will be, say, five years from now, 10 years from now? Do you think, do you think you'll, be, you'll be meeting the expectations of today, and then there will be new ones? Well, I think the opportunity really to bring together um, all the fragmented elements of that kitchen experience, everything from inspiration to planning to enabling the cooking experience, the sharing, and then the commerce. Uh, that is going to be the holistic approach and the expectation that the consumer is going to have moving forward. Um, you know, every product in the home is going to be an ecosystem in and of itself that is going to enable the best cooking experience. Uh, and those who are able to deliver that in the best possible way with the most, um, you know, awesome experience and the seamless, uh, you know, executed in a seamless way, I think are set up to, to win because, you know, from our perspective, that's going to be the, the, you know, the ultimate goal for the consumer is inspire me, prepare me, help me plan, show me how to do it, let me share, and help me commerce through these devices because that, I want it all to be done seamlessly. I think Alejandro said it really well there. Uh, I, I think Mobile technology has brought so many new conveniences to our lives, uh, the this, this social aspect, the, uh, the sharing aspect, uh, the convenience, uh, and the information. And I think all that's going to come into the kitchen in a, in a very fast way that makes just our kitchen experience a lot more convenient, a lot easier, um, takes, takes the hard work out and makes it more fun. Uh, how do you bring the existing grocery stores into this picture? Not, not necessarily the online versions of those, in, in some areas that may be the solution, but uh, your local stop and shop, your local Kroger. Who, it, have you guys started talking with those, with, with those vendors at all to try to see, hey, is there, is there a way we can make 
streamline that process easier, get the data in from what you're buying, get the inventory down a little bit better than it is right now? I'm not sure uh, the appliance guys are the are the right ones to do that part of, or handle that no, part of the process. you guys are making the refrigerators, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, I think the food companies are, are going to be a really important part of this, though, the, the ones actually manufacturing the food. Uh, uh, you know, they're putting the cooking instructions on the box. Uh, and there's also, also the very important health aspect of this. I, th I think the technology can make our, our lives a lot more healthy. And a lot of the other companies uh, here are coming with great products that help you measure you know, how much you're putting into the food. Um, so. So I don't, we haven't necessarily talked to any companies, but we've, or any of the grocery stores, but we obviously have examined the whole chain from when you go do your shops, if it's a weekly shop, bi-weekly shop, uh, and have studied that. I think there's uh, opportunities to help people better even, or better utilize the food that's in their home. Let's just say you buy basil, there's um, the opportunity to remind you that you've had it in there for two days already, that you probably should use it, and maybe even suggest a recipe to go along with it. it, it this is an interesting battle that's happening in terms of how the consumer shops. Um, today, most consumers walk into a store and they will walk the aisles and shop based on patterns of shopping that they've had you know, for years. And they will typically buy some of the same things again and again and again, and prepare some of the same meals again and again and again. That's the reality. If you look at consumer research, what it would say is people really don't diversify in terms of what they prepare you know, in terms of their meals uh, very often. They, they have go-to recipes, they have go-to things that they make, the family likes, and they do that on a regular basis. What we're talking about is the ability to shift into more of an on-demand economy where if I can plan and I can enable planning to happen in a very convenient way, then I'm going to be shopping with a plan in mind. And that is a completely different way of looking at the kitchen, looking at cooking, and um, the way that you shop. If that were to ever happen, and if we can enable that to happen, then the way that consumers are going to shop the store is going to fundamentally change. But we need to enable that, and technology is really the best way to enable that to happen. Uh, and so we're, we're really excited about the possibility to really pivot and shift from a more of a, um, you know, let me go see what I can buy type of, you know, shopping approach to this is what I need and this is what I'm going to prepare. So that, that, that hasn't happened yet and, and the retailer in many ways, um, you know, is, is, is more interested in creating more traffic that walks across all the different aisles uh, and, and less interested in enabling a more planned, proactive approach just because that may not be the best thing for them. And to follow up with that, I think also, I would have to look at the data we've collected, but I'm not sure the breakdown, there's a you know, pop, uh, subset of the population we've talked to that does enjoy the grocery shopping to go in the store, that whole activity, they take pleasure in that. Fair to say there's a, large subset of the population that doesn't want a smart aspect to their kitchen at all, right? I think that's pretty true. Um, what is a product that you guys like from one of your uh, other, uh, not necessarily competitors, although it could be, but somebody else in the, in the smart kitchen space? What is, is, are there any other products out there that you admire besides your own? Um, you know, there's two that come, in my, come to mind for me. The, I think the line of, of Wemo products from Belkin you know, they were pioneers in this space. Uh, they've done a phenomenal job building both the durable product and the platform. So the integration that they brought into the, uh, the smart, you know, the smart products in general has been, has been phenomenal. And then, um, you know, Santiago and Dior and Chef have done a phenomenal job with Countertop in creating really a great consumer experience, um, one that we, you know, all aspire to, to achieve. And so, you know, from my perspective, those are two great examples. I, I guess my favorite would be, and it's not a traditional, um, I guess, smart kitchen appliance, would probably be the Amazon Echo. I have it so that a lot of times I actually don't cook the full recipe, I need to cut it in half, or I'm trying to figure out how many teaspoons are in a cup. So it allows for doing the translations. 
had the opportunity to attend the IFA show in uh, Berlin uh, last month. Uh, IFA, a lot of appliance manufacturers throughout Europe, and a lot of really innovative things going on with major appliances in Europe. Um, a couple products that come to mind. One is Electrolux AEG with the uh, camera through the window that will, you know, show you what's going on in the oven from anywhere, uh, and and also control the oven remotely and all that. The Electrolux had a great product over there, and then. Uh, Bosch is doing some nice things with uh, sensors that go on the cookware and allow you to control the temperature of the, of the food you know, perfectly uh, with feedback to the control on the cooktop. So, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you mine. The, uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that mellow sous vide cooker. When that, when that finally drops, I think the refrigeration portion, the function of that device, it, that's some real time shifting potential there. For, uh, for cooking. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for that thing to come out. I hope it works as promised. Um, all right, so we've got about five minutes left. I wonder if we can open it up to just a quick Q&A, maybe a couple, two, three questions if we have time for it. All right. Oh, there's one. Mellow? Sure. The company is called FNV Labs. Uh, it is a uh, sous, it's a water bath sous vide cooker. Uh, it has a, an app connection to it, and it can refrigerate the water bath so that, for example, you could put food in the in the morning, keep it cold, food safe, and then time it to come on, uh, you know, until when you're coming home for dinner and have your food ready to go. So it really does kind of let you shift around the food prep process throughout your day. I say this in theory because I don't think it exists. It's it's on the market yet. The consumer doesn't really want a connected kitchen. They want the ability to serve the best meal for their family every night in the easiest, most convenient way. And more than ever, they want to do that um, in a way that is authentic, that it's organic, that it meets their um, dietary needs, uh, that it matches the taste profile of the five different members of their family. Um, and so if technology can enable that, then great. But it, it's not about the smart kitchen. It's about the, it's about the consumer being able to really deliver on that need that they have. And to break down that need further, I think that there's different types of cooking. On the weekdays, you may be just in a rush to get the food out so you can feed your family. So there could be different features to, uh, to help that along versus on the weekend, if you, and I enjoy cooking. I like to take the time, but it could help with some of the prep work or some of the stuff on the other side to enhance the experience. At Decor, we really like to focus on the food results, and uh, we can use technology to improve the food results. So we think that a lot of people are going to just want to cook better and have better results, more consistent results. So the technology that uh, that may make it more attractive to more people. I think. There is still well. First of all, consumer habits are hard to change. One good example of that is pure convection. We've had that in our ovens for 30 years. Still, only 30 percent of people use it, even though it's it really it improves the results of the food. Um, so some people probably won't change or adopt the technology, but um, there will be a good portion of them who just want better cooking results, and so there's a lot of opportunity with the technology there. And I think for us as manufacturers, there's also that opportunity to, when there's, the appliances are smarter, to have that dialogue with the end user and say, convection can give you this, or steam, as we're trying to push that out next. I have a hunch that's about all we have. Oh, two minutes? OK, maybe one more question. Stacy. I think that's a great question, and one that, again, 
just like we talked about in terms of how do we deal with data, um, as manufacturers, we were not prepared to deal with upgrades and um, the need to constantly be updating, upgrading, and improving the experience, be it on the hardware or be it on the app or be it on the holistic experience and the ability to connect the, you know, the software and the hardware and all the elements that make the experience. Um, it, it, it creates a tremendous amount of complexity you know, for us and it creates the need to think about skill sets and uh, organizational needs and, and new talent into the organization that we hadn't planned before. So it, it's very complex, at least for us, we, we were not ready for that. Uh, and, and that same applies for us as well, but one of the things we're trying to do to mitigate that is in our hardware side to build in a little bit more overhead, knowing that you can add new capabilities down the line with over-the-air updates, um, so you have more space there for the software. And the, the major appliance life cycle is eight to 12 years. Uh, so people probably aren't gonna be changing out their major kitchen appliances you know, every three years just to keep up with the technology. So designing the appliances in, in a way where the software and hardware can be easily upgraded, maybe for a minor charge, is, is one, one direction we're headed there. It, just having an Android tablet makes the over the, like Nate said, the over the air updates uh, a lot easier. So the software can stay up to date. It's just when does it, how quickly does that hardware become obsolete? And what can we do to swap it out it, if there is a new hardware option available? All right, I think that's time. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you guys. <laughs>